Hello again, friends and neighbors. Tessuiji back at his desk in his pajamas because it's a Saturday and it's a long weekend, so whatever. As the title of the episode implies, we got a couple days off, and that includes this stream. On Wednesday, I will not be streaming uh, Out of the Park Baseball 22 because I will be attempting to go to my first live baseball game since the pandemic started. If you don't know, I'm located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, which has had one of the most punitive lockdowns in North America, in part because our premier is a bit of a dork and not very clever, and in part because we've been hit really hard by the pandemic. So, the Blue Jays are not able to come north, but the Toronto Maple Leafs of the Intercounty Baseball League are able to play. So, their season opener is July 7th, and I am very much looking forward to enjoying that. Until then, let's get into some baseball, shall we? Or off-season, anyway. As luck would have it, we won the Japan Series for the second straight year in our previous stream after setting an NPB record with 100 wins on the nose in a 140-game season. As part of the off-season, we are admittedly a little limited in our options for players. We've lost two key components of our playoff drive in Max Kepler, who will likely be taking his talents back to MLB. At that price, yeah, uh, he's definitely going to find someone willing to pay it. And our previous closer, Suguru Iwazaki, who we picked up in a trade from the Hanshin Tigers and served us very well during that time frame. As a member of the Buffaloes, he racked up, what was that, 30, 76, over 100 saves. So you, you have to think that, he, that that trade for John Olsen was worth it. I mean, Olsen's still with the Tigers, but we did a lot of good getting Suguru. Unfortunately, I don't think we can actually keep him. Yeah, he's looking for a lot of money, and although we have some cash, I don't feel it's responsible to go after any big budget names just yet. Like Naoya Masuda is looking for a big contract. Hideto Asamura is looking for a contract. I'd only bring him on to play first, to be honest. I mean, he's been fantastic with the bat. With the Bay Stars, I think he won MVP. Yeah, he did. But he's been bouncing around the league. I did just something about him. I'd be tempted to get Kona Takahashi, but that movement is nice. But I mean, where do you put him in our rotation? And that's something I'm hoping to address today too. The fact that we need to make some room in the rotation. I mean, I know Ono is going to only has one more year on his contract, but. After winning the Sawamada Award last year by dropping his ERA by a full point, I mean, we may we may be actually able to keep him. I don't know. Gomez is going to round into form. Ward is still a reliable person, which really leaves Sakakibata and Kyoyama as on the bubble. And if you take a look at their records, as I did in between streams, it's Kyoyama who is arguably the weaker of the two. So... That may be our, our play there. One quick moment, I have a cap adjustment I want to make, because although Cebu's oh, That's the one I want, yes. So you'll notice that we've made a few uh, adjustments to the team since we last saw it, uh, joined the, the stream. Takanibu Matsuda, I called up 
both as an emergency starter and as a reliever because that arm is electric. He's going to be squabbling for a starting spot with uh, Ryoga Tomiyama here. I also uh, moved Masataka Yoshida into left. I took off the force at DH because I think we, we've got room for Akira Yamamoto to get some playtime. And I may also end up moving on from uh, Kurebayashi. He's probably going to end up being sort of our utility infielder at this point. Tongu is the fellow who's probably going to be on the move. Because as good of a catcher as he, I mean, as good as a first baseman he is, I don't need a catcher with 50 catcher ability. 55 is like the bare minimum, and that's where Shungyosai Masada can contribute. There's also the fact that Tongu only has a handful more years of uh, playability left. So I'll, I'm those are the two I've got on the trading block, but we'll get to that later. The primary thing I'm going to be looking at today is the draft. So I've already gone through and shortlisted a bunch of guys who I'm hoping can fall to us. We're probably going to go pitcher first, maybe even pitcher first and second. QG Tachibana looks like the best option out of the pitchers at the top of the set to fit in with our team. Decent movement, good stuff. If that control develops, it'll be great. Four already... Four pitches that are already in the average or better range. I also really like that hold runner. So Tachibana is going to be our preferred first pick. And we are going to try the NPB style draft this time. Sumiteru Kanazawa is also on the uh, the roster there. But uh, my scout does not like him as much as OSA does. Mashu Ishikawa looks like he could be... A decent corner outfield spot especially with that home run bat like if his bat develops he'd probably be solid but no one I'd really like seek out to get Tanaka's in or Takaki here is intriguing because he's a lefty the movement stinks so you're hoping for like talent change uh, randomness to kick in but that change up is already like among his major league quality other guys I'd look at would be Jinsei Kawamoto, ground baller. Even if he turns out to be a reliever, if that changeup never develops, that we could always use more ground ballers. Sumitomo Takata. Interesting bat. I hope he can stick at third base. Hichori Nomura, defensive center fielder. And this is someone who I hope falls to us, Akira Ishikawa, because... He may not be a starter, but you convert him to a reliever, he needs a dynamo lefty reliever. Even as is, like, he could go rele throw relief in the majors right now. So because we're doing the NPB style, I may not end up getting Tachibana. And because it's accordion style, we may not get any of these guys. Oh, one other name that I'm going to try and locate. Eiju Nakamura. Good catcher ability, good bat. He's basically Shungyozai Masuda, but with a chance of being better. And he's a lefty, too. So because Han it's an odd year, the CL will get to draft first. And because it's Hanshin who finished last in the CL, despite... Niigata and Okinawa Kirin having worse records. The Tigers will be drafting first. And you look at them, there's no reason they should be this bad. Oh yeah, last stream, uh, the DH is now a thing in the Central League. Oh, Joe Endo, good for him. The Tigers want anything for him? Uh, 
like you look at some of these teams you realize oh yeah we really do have a strong foundation in terms of pitching so hopefully we don't end up like previous years where every single team is going to try and pick the same pitcher the big three like interestingly enough my guy Huji Tachibana is expected to go 11th, so I'm going to put in my claim now, and you'll notice I have slightly adjusted the draft board so it looks a little easier to maintain. So we're going to go Tachibana. And we'll see if that's the right call. So I'm in commissioner mode. I'll flip around the picks. In the first round of selections, or as I always say, or something like that. Uh, why are we... Oh, we're not even at the draft, but we're still free agency filings. Ha, ha, ha. That's on me. All right, I have to pretend to be the Buffaloes right now. Or go back to being the Buffaloes. I want to sign this guy to be our uh, minor league coach. Apparently he didn't like my first offer, so let's go. Let's sweeten it to 80 grand for five years. As you can see, the results of our Back-to-back -back triumph. Ah, now he's okay with our deal. Come on, Perdomo. Oh, another team. Okay, don't do this to me, Luis. Anyways, draft time. See, the thing is, if everyone goes for the same player, my, my zigzag, I try not to pick, like, the next best guy. I try to pick someone further down so it doesn't feel like I'm cheating too much by doing this. Wow, they're really big on Koji Yamashita. Why is that? Ah, he has the big stuff for a high school player. So, with the first overall selection, the Hanshin Tigers have nominated Koji Yamashita. Interesting choice. Let's see how that pans out for them. The Niigata Komatsu Bears. Select Koji Yamashita. Okay, so we may have our usual nonsense going on. The Hiroshima Toyo Carp. Su suggest Yamashita. Okay. Remember, we've already picked QG Tachibana as our top selection.
Did everyone else's scouts just decide to read like the newspaper that day and saw the number one choice and said, yeah, well, yeah, let's let's go with him. Does nobody in this league have good scouting aside from us? Okay, I know the Hawks do, so th there's, there's at least that. Continuing saga of I wish the game... had better ideas than we do. Like, look at scouting. We are seriously going to have another, like, 11 way choice. Everyone gets goo goo eyes over the same stinking pitcher. Nobody thinks, what do I need right now? Nobody thinks. How would this benefit me? I guess we are really that hard up for, for pitching in this game. But at least the new uh, setup for the text boxes is easier. I'm going to be making fewer errors on that. Yep. Oh, and also you'll notice that there will be fewer Akashi Shogyo high schools showing up. Uh, I was able to work with Lucas at Out of the Park Baseball, and we were able to figure out why that keeps happening. So starting from the next draft pool, you'll see other schools show up. Thank goodness, because this was starting to get annoying. Alright, and the fighters are going to go with... Yamashita. Alright, so... The thing I didn't expect to happen wound up happening. Everyone went, is going to go for Koji Yamashita, except us. Kyuji Tachibana will fall to the Oryx Buffaloes. And I'm thrilled about that. So let's get our random drawer here. I mean, this also, this isn't like cheating in that it's making the other teams worse. Like you remember the Giants got the top pick last year. They got, they should have improved. The fact that they didn't is kind of a black eye on their part. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. A hush falls over the crowd as all the GMs start to select their, their envelopes. Only one will be a winner. And good for the Okinawa Kirin spirit, they have won the draft lottery for Koji Yamashita. So I'm going to clear out a bunch of these other names. And for Kirin to finally get their guy first, I think that's got to feel good for them as a recent expansion franchise. Alright, so Okinawa moves to first. 
Oryx moves to second. And I'm going to mute my system sounds. All right. So, the Okinawa Kirin Spirit will indeed select Koji Yamashita. The Oryx Buffaloes will select Kyuji Tachibana from the University of Tokyo. Which leaves us with 12 teams still to go. Who's the next player who people are going to get goo-goo eyes over? The Hanshin Tigers will be drafting. Shoichi Kamikawa, the starting pitcher. Interesting choice. I'm not sure if that's actually the consensus top pick. If he develops, he looks like he'll be a solid choice. Niigata Komatsu Bears. Also one in on Kamikawa, so here we go again. It's always a refreshing change when someone else zigzags. Ah, there's our first zigzag. The Chibalate Marines have selected Kenkichi Endo, center fielder. Bit of a, a, not exactly Mr. Congeniality, but if that bat continues to develop. Lefty home run power, pull hitter, and decent defense. I think the Marines might have something on their hands there. All right, Chunichi is next. And the dragons also want Endo, so we will have multiple picks being contested instead of everyone going after the same dude. But Octan also wants in on Endo. See, this is what you oh, what I expect to see, whether there isn't a consensus number one pick. So Kamikawa dubbed or tapped by the Giants. Cebu wants in on Kamikawa as well. Baystar say yes to Kamikawa. Hawks too. And the fighters are going to put in for Ken Kichiendo. So we have two drafts for, th or yeah, two drafts, two players. Every other team is going to be contested here. This could be fun. So for the Kamikawa selection, we have Hanshin, Komats, Hiroshima, Yakult, Yomiuri, Seibu, DNA, and SoftBank. 
And the team that will get to ch keep Shoichi Kamikawa is You can tell why some people think that the draft is rigged. So Kamikawa will land in the Giants lap for the second straight time they get their preferred top selection. First it was Tateishi, now this. So then for Endo, the choices are Latte, Chunichi, Dak Ten, and Nippon Ham. And the Tohoku Dak Ten Golden Eagles have picked up the center fielder. All right, so four picks down, ten to go. Hanshin back has at the the front of the line. In the third supplemental round, or the third of the first rounds, Hanshin's gonna go for Eiju Nakamura. I had a look at this guy too. Six plus pitches, great personality. It was tempting to go for him, but I wound up with Tachibana because I think Tachibana's movement will play better in the bigs. Who are the Bears going to go with? The Bears want Nakamura too. The reason why I keep dragging other players down there, I, I'm just doing it to make sure that, yes, the I click the scouting director recommendation button, and this is who they actually want. We could have another all teams pick if this keeps up. The actual MPB draft is never this contested. We don't have all 12 teams trying to put it on one player. I think the record was seven set by Kotaro Kiyomiya a few years ago. No surprises this round. It looks like it's Eiju Nakamura who's the consens consensus selection. With all ten teams remaining, wanting in. Oh, 
we have a deke there soji sugihara the catcher switch hitting catcher with some serious pop in his bat will be picked up by the hokkaido nippon ham fighters so they have their guy good work nippon ham for deking out the rest of the league So we got Hanshin, Komatsu, Hiroshima, Yakult, Lotte, Chunichi, Seibu, DNA, and SoftBank all in on Nakamura. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So who's going to get to win this dude? See what I mean how it doesn't feel like cheating when the good teams get their guys? The Fukuoka Softbank Hawks move up quite nicely and will steal Eiju Nakamura from other more deserving teams. And kudos to the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters for getting their still their guy too. Big brave move by the Hawks to get Nakamura. And the fighters to get their guy in Sugihara. Seventh round now. Or uh six. Team's done, eight to go. Pacific League looks like we're hitting pretty well on the, the luck factor. The Gi only the Giants in the Central League have been able to get anyone. Alright guys, make this easy for me, please. The Hunching Tigers are going to go with Kaoru Miura. He's basically ready to start in the bigs right now. So good on Hanching for picking someone who can help out the Major League squad basically day one. a bit surprised it took this long. And don't look now, but here we go again. Yep, yeah, seems like Miura is the consensus selection for this round. Oh, I stand corrected. The Swallows are have nominated Tokuzo Yonemura from Choshi Shogyo High School as their choice. Wow, that contact bat. You have four high school seasons where he's averaging 490, 495 as a batting average with extra base pop. I mean, I'd put him more as a right fielder, but uh, if he develops, Jingu's about to become a launching pad. So, clever move by the Swallows to Zig here. See what Chiba Latte thinks. Chiba is of like minds. It's Yonemura between the two of them. Chunichi Dragon's going to go with. Aha! So there may be some fighting over. 
Tokuzo Yonimura. Very interesting. Seibu is going to put in on Miura. And DNA, the Central League pennant winners. They want a piece of Miura as well. So three teams for Yonemura, five teams for Miura. Those five teams are Hanshin, Komatsu, Hiroshima, Seibu, and DNA. Well, look at that. There's justice in the world. The Hiroshima Toyo Carp will indeed get to select Kaoru Miura to lead their rotation, basically. Seibu, once again, whiffing on their pick. Ditto for DNA, but whatever, you won the Pacific League pennant. You don't need to argue. For Yonemura's services... It is Hiroshima, Yakult, and Lotte. Three teams, one and three shot. Wait, Hiroshima already picked someone. It's Yakult, Lotte, and Chunichi. Whew. Someone's about to get a franchise changer. Finders Keepers, the Swallows, will get Yonemura. So that leaves six teams still to select, three in each league. The Carp want Muta, they'll get him. The Swallows will get Yonemura. And now things get difficult because now I actually have to go into the CSV file to update for the remaining six teams and swap folks around. So, may get a little messy. We'll see how this goes. All right. The Hanshin Tigers, attempt number four. They're going to go with starting pitcher Akikazu Nishimura. Interesting lefty choice. You better hope those uh, pitches develop. The Komatsu Bears. Want in on Nishimura. The Chiba Latte Marines will go with the center fielder Mashu or Mashu Ishikawa. I had my eye on him, so uh now it's just a matter of, will he fall to these guys in Latte? Only three picks remain. 
We'll see if Chunichi successfully zigs on this one. The Dragons go for another player altogether, Hidenori Yamamoto. Big prospect out of high school. If that bat develops, Yamamoto could be a dominant player for the Chunichi Dragons. And again, they have the DH now. This is important to remember. Saitama Seibu wants in on Nishimura. So one of Ishikawa and Yamamoto is sealed. Like, that's done. Taken care of. Potentially both. It all comes down to who DNA is going to pick. We may have had two successful zigs in the same draft. In the same round, I should say. Yep, the Bay Stars want Nishimura. Which means we can confirm the selections of Mashu Ishikawa to Chiba Latte and Hidenori Yamamoto to the Dragons. Well played, both teams. So, let's get the draft picker set up. It's Hanshin, Komatsu, Seibu, and DNA. One in four shot of having Akikazu Nishimura join their squad. Yo! And he will be taking his talents to Tokorozawa. The Seibu Lions will acquire the services of Akikazu Nishimura. So that's Seibu. That's Latte. And that's Chunichi. Set up. That leaves only three teams having whiffed on every single pick so far. And good on Latte for finally getting their guy by successfully zigging here. Seibu will take Shimura. Wate will take Ishikawa. Chunichi will take Yamamoto. And then there were three. The Tigers, the Bay Stars, and the Bears. And I forgot to reorder them properly. Excuse me. Who are the poor Hanshin man? Like they they just had rough luck. The Tigers want to get in on Sumiteru Kanazawa. It's one of the guys I had my eye on. I don't mind. Bears. Bears want in on Kanazawa, so once again, the top. Those poor top two teams want the same guy every single time. And the Bay Stairs want. 
Base stairs, base stars. Kanazawa. Okay, so... Someone's gonna go home unhappy. Three straight, con or all these contested picks, one in three shot, Hanshin Komatsu DNA. Who's getting him? Yo! The Bears have their man finally. And since there's only two picks remaining, I will let those two picks play out as normal. I'm not going to do the NPV style draft because hopefully they don't both go for the same dude. So who does Hanshin eventually end up taking? Hanshin eventually will take the best remaining pitcher in Norugomi, uh, Norugumi Kaneshiro. And the base stars will finally end up taking... Takao Kawahara. And there you have it, folks. That is the first round of the 2025 NPB Draft. So I can turn off commission mode. And now we are in round two. I have no idea if any of Takata, Kawamoto, or that Akira fellow will fall to me. Especially since there's a, a wealth of pitchers up at the top of the roster here. So, I'm going to go pick by pick just for the second round. Let's see if we get any bolded names. Sakamoto to the Tigers. So, two pitchers. Good for them. Komatsu. Ah, dang it, they took Jinsei. I was really hoping we could get... Nice mustache, hello. Uh, Kawamoto here. So now our, our second round pick is... Maybe Sumiki Takaki? Maybe we go down to Akira Ishikawa... Just to make sure we get him. And we have the back-to-back, -back, so... Back to back, and then nothing for 18 picks, so I gotta be careful. Hiroshima goes for Masahiko Taira. Hirin Tarakuni Nakagawa. Center fielder. High contact bat. Interesting choice. Ah, the Swallows took Takata. Alright. Marines go for the big first baseman, Nariyuki. Takeuchi, good luck if they can figure out how to make his bat work. Junichi gets Sakai there. Nakten. Iwashita. Control Freak, nicely done. Yomiuri gets Hirokichi Hirata. Big stuff arm. Questions about whether or not he can actually start though. Sojiro Shimizu, another guy who just throws straight bullets. Another lefty goes to the Seibu Lions. Bay Stars. Norishige Seki. The Hawks go for another pitcher. And Tsuyoshi Ishii. Wow, that's a... That's unlike the, the Hawks. I wonder what they see in him. Fighters are going to grab Tadashi Watanabe, who has the best defensive shortstop ever. In this draft so they're clearly thinking we need to replace our defensive shortstop so we have the pick of the litter here 
do we really go pitcher pitcher Takaki looks like he'd be amazing oh yeah let me get the uh, geniality filter on Nomura would just be defense Shusuke Ikeda, I'm hoping he falls to us in the 4th and 5th round. I'm thinking like DH type. So we got the back-to-back. -back. We're going to draft two lefties. Sumiki Takaki from Keio University. And Akira Ishikawa from Nihon University. And we are immediately going to set Ishikawa as a reliever because... Yes. If that changeup develops, though, all the better. Like, he's going to become a stud. But we may have gotten ourselves a new Yuki Matsui. And now we wait until it's our next turn. Oh, let me just do the auto pick. Okay. Okay. Suboy here is still available. Nah, ah, 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 ags. Uh, they really still can't figure out nicknames. Misahiko Takeuchi. Interesting option as maybe like a second baseman. Bit of a noodle bat. Ah, yes, the Shintaro Fujinami model of throw it and hope it ends up in the strike zone. So there's some interesting pitchers in a very pitcher-heavy draft, but why did I like this guy? And we've got the double up. Eiju Nakamura is going to be one of those two. Tatsuo Yoneda looks like he could be an interesting option. I think it might actually be Tsuboi we, we pick up. Not usually one for, for high schoolers, but uh, you need to replenish the pitching core. All right, here we are, round six. Let me take a look at my draft pool, folks. The only one who is highlighted that I still have left to pick up is Tatsuo Yoneda, so I think I will. Who did my other guys go to? Hichori Nomura, who I really liked as a defensive guy, goes to the Bears. Chusuke Ikeda, I really liked his bat. Yomiuri picked him up in the third round. Chitoji Kai. Decent reliever option. Goes to the Tigers in the fourth round. Hiroshi Inoue, who I had an option to pick up but opted not to just now. And Shingo Sato. He may be a crummy pitcher, but he's a ground baller at least. So we are going to get Tatsuo Yoneda. And we need to, to stock up again on Third baseman and outfielders. Akira Kanda is trying to play everywhere. Interesting strategy. And yes, I am looking beyond my usual congeniality filter to see if there's anyone I might have missed. I think Shinobu Takada here might be our, our pick. For third baseman. Right-handed bat with some pop. I'll take that. Eighth and ninth round back-to-back -back selections. Koji Ishikawa looks like a decent defensive option. I 
I like Nobuhiko Tamaki based on his uh, personality. Yeah, I think we're going to go with Tamaki here. The two non-ground ball type batters are both having issues actually connecting with the bat, whatever. Do not need more first baseman. Let's go with a uh, Sojiro Okimoto here. And we have the last choice in the draft. And we're going to go with Shoma Maeda here. And that is the draft. Some good high ceilings here. Also a lot of upset people who I may need to release because they are aging out and not able to crack the major league roster. So let's get these three on the block. Honda just hasn't been the same since that injury. Such a shame. Uemura has not cracked this roster, and we have a new catcher who basically is him but better. Shosei Kaneshiro does not have a role in this team, I don't think. But I'm okay to hang on to him for a little bit longer. It's only a matter of time for Jitsuo comes up. Look at that bat. That's going to be amazing to have on our team. Unfortunately, we can't do any trades during, like, the uh, winter meetings because our... Our one trade allowed... Per season. Was already spent. And I need to find... Oh, here we are. Oh, good. Perdomo finally signed. He's going to make some good use of our uh, other guys we just drafted. Wow! The Hawks going big for Seung Hyun Lee. 
Seung Hyun, the posted with $16 million from Latte. The Giants, not the Marines. So, uh, the Hawks are kind of going to be a little strapped for cash, aren't they? Well, never mind. They still have tons of it. And that posting fee is just going to be spread out year over year over year. Ah, and he's got two years of arbitration left. Clever. And this is why the Hawks are going to continue to be a thorn in my side. So who's on the, the trading block that, that isn't from my team? That we could look at. Munetaka Murakami's available. Pending free agent. Oh my goodness. He's only 25 years old. Swallows aren't listening to offers from us. Okay. Clearly they don't want to give it to a team that can actually win. Hey, Takanashi coming from Spirit. I don't think we need more help in the bullpen, but he's a ground baller. Right, who did the Spirit want then? They will take just about anyone. What does our bullpen look like though? Like we've got talent up and down. All right, so are we gonna trade with, end up trading with the carp again? Interesting, Shunpei Yoshikawa, well, nice teeth. Uh, okay, so the, he, yeah, he's strictly a reliever. I feel bad about giving up on Hiromu Issei after he won a title with us, but I just, we've got better options in the bullpen right now. ground ballers specifically like Shun Ikeda when your ceiling is just a little bit better than who we have right now it's not exactly a compelling case and we don't have anyone that the carp want to get Masato Morishita so let's keep keep moving on Hideto Asamura to the fighters? Oh boy. Oh, they are going to be hard to handle next season.
four years. So you're you're willing to pay Hideto Asamura into his year thir age thirty nine season? Ah, vesting option. Okay. So to recap, Asamura went from the Lions to the Eagles as a free agent, signed a one year prove it deal with the Bay Stars, was able to get two years out of the Lions, and now it is getting paid by the fighters so from 5 million down to 3 million back up to almost 4 now 6.2 I think I guess they stopped doubting him wow see uh, any other interesting signings Jeffrey Marte heads back continues his tour of the league he's going to be playing with the Bay Stars now Catcher Shogo Sakakura leaves the carp, goes to the Bears. Ryo Watanabe also signs with the Bears. Sho Tadauchi, three years from the, the Spirit. Clearly, they wanted some pitching. Yan Cheng Wang returns to the Tigers after a dalliance with the Marines. I had my eye on Taisho Tamai, and it looks like he's rejoining the Bay Stars. No, let me check in on uh, all right, Iwazaki's thing going stateside. Yamaoka doesn't want to come back home. I'd still like to get him. Masada also thinking the Red Sox. Could have a very interesting uh, bullpen out there. I'm gonna offer a minor league deal to Koki Tanaka, formerly of the Tochigi Golden Braves. Could always use some some extra hands around the, the minor league team. Oh no, Kepler went to the Hawks? Ugh. Top 10 anime betrayals. 6.6 .6 million for one year. So the Hawks just became very, very good in adding Kepler for a single year. Higashihama heads to the Eagles for three years at almost three million per. Old man Yasuhiro Ogawa bounces from the Bears to the Tigers. So Tigers have actually gained in their uh, wins above replacement. The Hawks have just barely replaced their dudes. I guess they didn't want to get dull and they went with Kepler instead. Oh, that's why Sang Hon Lee got posted. 
He spent almost two years out with a ruptured UCL. So, big ticket risk for uh, the Hawks there. Interesting move. Yeah, I'm not going to sign you for actual money there, Tanaka. Naoya Masada heads to the Boston Red Sox as a captain type role. I mean, good choice. Boston's got some interesting names there. Christian Vasquez with 32 dingers. Wow, he developed very nicely. And they got Kumar. And now you add Naoya Masuda to this bullpen. How are Bluebirds doing? Vladdy being Vladdy. SWR at the top of the rotation. Nate Pearson, free agent due to fragility. I may still reserve the right to swoop in and make a free agent deal, but I'm okay to be patient. I mean, really, the only position I'd be looking at to improve is first base or left field. One of which is going to be Masataka Yoshida. The other might be Ryo Tokita or Kotaro Kurebayashi. I've already made up my mind about trading away uh, Yuma Tongu. And now we got Eiju Nakamura who might come up and be our new... Koki Tanaka went to the Bears. Suguru Iwazaki heads to the Red Sox. So they got Masuda and Iwazaki as their, their Japanese connection out there. Oh, not the Bears. He signs with the Niigata Alberex. Okay. Yuki Matsui from the Twins to the Cubbies. Old man Sakamoto. Are they ever going to flip him over to third base, I wonder? It's getting to the point where I don't know who top players in the league are anymore. I know we just gave one up in Max Kepler, so kind of peeved about that, but we know how to work around him. The answer is, throw lefties at him. I remember hearing that Nozomo Inoue was interested in leaving Kirin. I 
Not sure if that's still the case. I'm just scouting at this point to see if there's anyone at first or left field we could pick up. Nishikawa for Sato. Mm. Mm -mm. No, no liking it. Fujiwara be interested in coming here? Well, still, the fact that I was able to get a nibble on Nishikawa means there may be a trade with the base stars we could look at. Kobayashi does not have the offense to do what I want it to do. They want Fernandez or Seiya for Tsutsugo. Not happening. Yeah, let's throw that congeniality filter on too. Taiki Ohata though. Would the Marines be interested in making a move? They got a two-way player in Brody Brecht. The Bears have Natsuki Endo, who has moved back into the outfield. Good for them. They want Shinosuke Sato for Natsuki Endo, and that's a no from me. King Kota is the wrong side of the field. I call him King Kota because he was the phenom in a previous save. What about Ogo here? They're willing to take Tongu. Ogo has a slight platoon advantage versus right. But he's a defensive step back. What about Sawano, though? Lefty batter, slight advantage on uh, the splits. Oh, but he, he plays third or first. We already have a superstar by the name of Video Ota who does the same thing. So not Sawano. Yeah, this was what I mean by Yomiuri still gets good guys. Pateishi, man. Of course, now we can't bat because there's no DH in the Pacific or in the Central League. Ha ha ha, soccer. We got Fukuda, who is no longer a starting pitcher. I mean, I guess I could try and convert him back to. Ooh, what just happened? So it looks like our, our, our coach still wants to give Isamu Fukuda a shot at pitching. He didn't pitch at all last year. I mean, he's habitually been bleh. He had one good year with... Then he underperformed his FIP. All right, two good FIP years and then bleh. Like, I'm willing to give him a shot as in the starting rotation again. in spring training, and we'll see if he actually can hang with it. Hmm. 
And then you take a look at first baseman. As fun as Murakami would be, I don't think he'd sign with us. I don't think... Yeah, the Swallows do not want anything we're offering. Like, even if I gave him... Like, Takanibu Matsuda. Or our top prospect in, like, Jitsuo Onizuka. Or Shinosuke Sato. Why put someone on the trading block if you are not willing to trade them, Eugenius? I mean, there is Motohide Kinoshita, but... If I'm trading for him, why don't I just keep... Uh... Asataka Yoshida out and left. Yasuda. Okay, Yasuda's got a big platoon split. I hadn't thought of Hisanori. But they want Sato at least for him. Can we start the conversation at Tongu? Tongo, oh yeah, so Tongu and Kaino is an interesting one. What if I gave you Kyoyama instead? Alright, that might be the move. To get Yasuda. And let's throw in... Throw in Rio Yoshida. Okay, this might be the move. Four pitchers and Tongu. For a free season. Of Hisanori Yasuda. Bit of a King's Ransom. How many years of... Uh... Oh, we only get him for two more seasons. Eh. I'm willing to do that deal. So what if I removed Ise? Like, I'm willing to eat m money... Keep Issei, because he's actually a worthwhile piece. And give up these guys. Maybe if we throw in... Uh, Uemura? Hitomi Honda is still a viable starter? Yes, but barely. Okay. So we're not going to get rid of him. So let's skip to the end of the year, and I think this is the deal.
Kyoyama frustrates me. Yasuda does not. I mean, tempting as it is to add yet another pitcher in Hiromu Issei. Issei at least still can contribute at the major league level to a bullpen. I don't think Ryo Yoshida, and certainly not Kintaro Takahata can. I mean, for a 45 contact bat, he gets his knocks in. He's been above 100 WRC+. plus. He's been a 5-win player the last few seasons. As long as we put him against righties, we'll be in great shape. And that's exactly what we want to do here. So this is it. This is our one trade. Happy New Year! Let's move uh, Issei up to the Major League team. Mark him as available. We want him first base and benched against lefties. Now that looks like a strong lineup. And plus, if Yoshida is old and broken, we can extend Yasuda, especially if he does well. Like keeping his, his bill around 3 mil seems like a wise move. But we'll let the season play out to see if that ARB estimate holds true. Yudai wants Major Bank. He's probably not going to get it. And we've got Kaino, Ikeda, Daichi, and Kayama. We've got a lot of folks coming up available for uh, leaving the team. Keeping Issei, I'm okay with. Hiromu can probably do well in limited play. And we'll see, again, I'm okay with putting Fukuda in at least for spring training. But I'd very much have him prefer to have him as our primary left fielder. Yeah, actually, it looks like doing that takes away his ability to DH. Let's not... I think it, it's safe to say that... Uh, Fukuda is going to be a left fielder for for good. I like that, that lefty-righty split. So we get Kudebayashi in at first. We get Yoshida moving to DH, and we get Isamu Fukuda drawing in at left. And we still got Kita and Hirano, one of whom is going to actually be our primary outfielder. We may not need Akira Yamamoto anymore at this point. We'll, we'll have to figure that out. So the Marines, let's 
Let's see what their new roster looks like. So, oh, they called up their new defensive shortstop, Tomojito Ono. Interesting. So it looks like Tongu's going to settle in as their backup catcher. Interesting. Kyoyama's going to join the rotation. Ditto for Kentaro Takahata. Ryo Yoshida joins their bullpen. So really, like, they're, they stand to benefit from this deal, too. It's not a complete win-loss. For us, though, it helps null the, the fact that we lost 8 wins above replacement. We got 4.6 in Yasuda. I've always liked him. Coming from the, the, the Marines. And now he's on our squad. And I'm eager to see how he fares. Do you get to keep his number? Yep, he's still number five. Good, good. Seth McGarry goes to the Tigers. Interesting play there. Let's see if he's still any good. Former Buffalo Kazumasa Yoshida to the Dragons. When did this guy become available? Ah, posting. So they, so the Eagles throw some money around to get their foreign uh, Korean dude in Dong Wook Oh. Kona Takahashi to the Hawks. Five years, 4.1 million. See, this is why I can't play in the uh, free agency. I can't deal with that kind of price tag getting thrown around. The Marines former first baseman Seiya Inoue decides to became a free agent after rejoining the Marines. Hey, old, our old friend Wakatsuki is available as a free agent. Do we really want to keep uh, Shungyosai Masuda off this team? I think it's time for him to, to make the call up, so. Tempting as it is to go back to Wakatsuki just based on defense. Masuda's already a better batter. So, we'll keep Shungyosai. Can't wait to see what Manny Guzman's ready to do in the new season. How much money have the fighters spent? My goodness. Or the Hawks, rather. Their payroll is back to being first by a mile. 48 million this year. So as much as I say, well, yes, of course, I'm concerned about spending too much money. My payroll is fifth by a fact. You can basically double my payroll or go my payroll times one and a half. And only then am I over the Hawks. Fighters also spending money like like sailors. Do sailors still spend money? I don't know. And even though we're third in attendance, we're still fifth in gate revenue. Might need to fix that. Might. Might need to fix that. I honestly think the, the Eagles may be ready to take that next step and become a permanent thorn in our side. This guy's their sixth starter? Oh, ground baller, okay. Let's see if there's any foreign guys. If I didn't already have scads of foreign players, 
Bak Ho Gong would be an interesting choice. Three point four million. Like I could afford that if I wanted to, but that means one of Ward, Guzman, Fernandez, Gomez, and Sanchez isn't available. There's also the fact that I just traded for Hisanori Yasuda, so. Hmm, Vinny Diaz, you say? No. No, I don't think I will. Flyball pitchers, no thank you. So I addressed my one burning concern pretty swiftly, didn't I? The Death Star will continue to be fully operational. I mean, in retrospect, maybe I could have afforded to gun after Taiki Ohata instead. More of a power bat. But Yasuda's a, a, an okay option. Alright, voting results for the Hall of Fame. Hey, Hitoki Iwase finally made it. Good for him. Kyuji Fujikawa's probably not far behind him. The all-time saves leader in NPB. All-time games leader, a thousand games as a pitcher. Gets to join the Hall of Fame. And he played until he was 47. The Jamie Moyer of Japan. Boston is just collecting all the Japanese relievers. For those of you keeping track at home, they now have Masuda, Iwazaki, and Yuitomori. All in the same bullpen. This is kind of hilarious. All right, so let's see our schedule. Let's see what... Uh, that looks like. So we're starting play first weekend against the Fighters in a rematch of the Climax series, but only for two games. The 
All-Star game needs to be on the 25th this year. Okay. Once again, the All-Star game is showing up in the wrong spot. And I don't know how to fix that. Ah, oh, there we go. Reimporting the schedule fixed it. So we now start the season on the road against the Bears. Our home opener will be Tuesday, April 7th against the Cebu Lions. That's more like it. Interesting. So it looks like uh, our coach is going to try and get Takanibu Matsuda into the starting rotation. He's going to be pushed by Shinnosuke Sato. That I can tell. We also have this uh, Akira Ishikawa guy. Yeah, I may actually send down Tomiyama just to stay stretched out as a starter. We do not need five catchers, so uh, Uemura is going to be given his walking papers. Ditto for Shosei Kaneshiro. There is only one guy who should be starting at catcher, and that is Eiju Nakamura. Although I will suggest he is benched against lefties. Any other big names joining? Oh, hey, Tyler Austin returns to NPB after a dalliance in MLB. Looks like he was with the Rockies organization. And he will join the Chiba Latte Marines, taking the spot of Hisanori Yasuda, who we acquired. So, welcome back, Austin. Tyler Higgins also returns to NPB with the Marines. Reed Garrett. They're just signing all the guys who have NPB experience. Otaka Yamakawa to the Carp. Four years, 4.3 million. Wow. Bold move. Let's see if it pays off. Looks like the Japanese free agents have been kind of picked dry at the moment. Let's scope out the... Uh... The, mi the uh, independent miners. 
of the Indies and see if they ha are hiding any countrymen. All right, it's former Buffalo prospect Hyogo Kobayashi. Daiki Asama to the Sonoma Stompers. I guess the fighters decided not to bother with him. I might have given him a look, but uh, not at that price tag. Nishiura is going to be playing in Shikoku. Good for him. Carp keep opening up the pocketbooks. Yuya Yanagi, three years at 3.2. A year. He's out for a year because he cracked his molar on a sesame seed roll. This sounds to me like an exile to Robidas Island, more than anything. So I think we're going to keep simming at least through spring training and then we'll wrap the session up on the doorstep of the 2026 season at which point you, faithful viewer, will have to wait a year or a week. Any other big names signed? Nope. Whole bunch of 20-somethings who are probably washed up. It's interesting, you can still trace the, the trades I made for where people wound up and how they're doing. So, it's spring training! Man, my scout still does not like Hiroya Miyagi. Those guys all get invites. And then on the batting side, Osho, Jitsuo, Noguchi is finally going to get an 
chance to play. Alright, there's our setup. Get rid of some of the four starts. Not sure if I agree with putting Kudebayashi at DH over Jeets, but I can't argue with my coach on this. So we got five weeks. We're probably going to make our first cuts around March 11th, barring injury. Looks like Cargo's ready to contribute on a bigger scale. Nice to see. UCL, torn rotator cuff. Oh, Emo is gone for a while. Bone chips. 2022's first round pick over in Yakult. And that would have been nice to have gotten Emo. I think we were too good. So, here we are. At 500, and it is time for making cuts. So I think we can safely say anyone who's sporting a 20 is going to be demoted down. Shinnosuke Sato, three innings so far, scoreless. Man, if that changeup develops...
He's getting there. He's slowly climbing up. He'll be ready to join the team basically just about when Yudai Ono is ready to leave it. Oh my. Jitsuo. We may have our new DH. Like, never mind Akira Nakamura. Yeah, Jeets. And yes, that means putting Yoshida in the field, but he can still do it. I mean, it's either that or teach Hisanori Yasuda, who's not as good of a fielder to feel, play left. Besides, we got Yuki out in the middle. That's fine. Let's uh, figure out who's going to be sticking around. I like keeping three catchers for now in case anyone gets injured. Moda has not seen any game action, so I'm going to be sending him to the miners. Miura is not impressed. So I, I hate to say it, but I think Miura's got to figure his bleep out in the minors. We'll keep Hirota up for a little bit longer, but I think the second base spot is basically between him and Daichi Suzuki, at least for this season. We have too many good third basemen. Hatsuhiko Nakao will see some playtime. But defensively, I don't think Nakao is good on either side of the field. We'll see how about that. Let, let's bid... You know, yay, farewell by at least forcing him to start at left down in the minors. Has Osho done anything? Oh, fur, Osho. So down he goes. Everyone else is going to be sticking around at least a little bit longer. Let's see if Jitsuo can stick with the big club. That's our next uh, break in play, the 24th. Okay, so we'll sim ahead to that. And that'll be our time for second cuts. Gout? Okay. So Ono's got a sore shoulder. Let's let's give him a break. He'll be on the IL for ten days. We're gonna test out Akira Ishikawa as a starter. Interesting. I mean, he's impressed so far. Might as well.
Taniguchi, Intercostal Strain. You know, it's close enough to the cuts time, so we're going to demote him first. And then move him from Miners. To the DL. We may have stumbled into a really good pick with Ishikawa. Matsuda looks like he's doing solid. Like the pit, the starting rotation looks fine. All right, so Jitsuo has cooled off a bit, so he may not be our. DH, we'll see. Alright. Final cuts time. We gotta get down to... Alright, so Shinosuke Sato is not going to be a reliever. That much I know. Tempting as it is to go with Ishikawa right at the hop. Oh, yeah, okay, you know what? Yeah, first steps first. Anyone who's are not on the 40 man is going to be sent down. Kaino and... Okay, you know what? Not Nakata. Let's bring up someone else from the miners. Oh, Tachibana's already looking like a good pick. How did Masaru Sato do? Might be Masaru Sato, actually, who... Uh... Going to join our bullpen. Kaino better figure it out, or he's going to be gone from the rotation, or from the bullpen. So Issei sticking around. Keda, Izumi. I can't believe I'm doing this, but Shungyosei Masuda is, has not made the team. Eiju Nakamura, our draft pick, will get a chance to play in the bigs. So Onizuka's 7.30, Yasuda's 7.85. Okay. Uh, I think Yamamoto might actually be our DH going forward. So Jitsuo is like on the cusp of doing well. So we're going to hang him around a little bit longer. I think I want to see Nakamoto get, or Yamamoto get more starts. So Hirota, 17. Come on, 534. I hate to do this to Hirota, but... Uh, Aichi's going to hang in there. Okay. 
He's just having a rough off season, so I'm gonna be uh, shuffling him down to the miners. Yamato's having a good year. And, and just by dint of, you know what, I, I'm going to hang around and keep Noguchi hanging around. He's impressed so far. But I think we're going to four start Yamamoto. Give him a chance to get some licks in until we hand things over to... Jitsuo. I don't think Jitsuo Onizuka is making the team this year, but he is banging on the door. Now take your time, you die. No need to rush back. Tsunayuki Tanaka looks like he's found gold. That movement still worries me, but our third round pick from two seasons ago looks like he could be a contributor sooner than later. Kyuji Tachibana just added a mile per hour to his stuff. He's not far from joining the club, to be honest. Shinosuke Sato. He's going to be first off the bump. This may be the season Sato joins the big club. Davit's available as a minor leaguer. If Miyuna can get that 40 contact, then I think he's usable as a second baseman. And oof, cracked your finger. That stinks. Masaru Sato may actually hang out with the big club this year. Proper long relief man. Akira Ishikawa just added a kilometer per hour to his speed. Our third round pick making the bigs right out the shoot. Isanori Yasuda is starting to have his ratings drop. Great. But he's still a good platoon partner, so I'm okay with keeping him in there. Over Kure Bayashi. And worst comes to worst, we made a bad trade. Oh well. We have Jitsuo Onizuka basically ready to leap on anything. But we're going to keep him in the minors because he had a rough... He started great, but he fell off the, the wagon a little bit there. So. 
Final cuts to pitchers. Shun Ikeda, it will be heading down. Masaru Sato, close, but I don't feel like uh, giving him a spot in the bullpen just yet. Issei makes the club. And we've got our bleep you components of Tamo Fujimoto, Kaoru Higashi, and Julian Fernandez all set and ready to rock. So with Jitsuo heading down, I only have one cut left. Yamamoto's hung in nicely, but... Alright, so Noguchi will be heading down, but at age 22 he's close. He's like just on the cusp of making this team. I may also end up putting Yamamoto at DH and letting Fukuda bat. Against both sides of the plate. No, actually, no. His, uh, his splits have become more pronounced, so he's going to stay as a righty first bat. Good job by Yamato picking up the slack, too. He's going to be a contributor this year. I can feel it. So we still don't know when Yudai Ono's back, but uh, we'll hopefully be ready to go. We're going to give him a rehab, uh, like a short rehab stint, just to be ready. And worst comes to worst, we can always call up Shinosuke Sato. So congrats to Akira Ishikawa for joining the big club right out the shoot.
He's the only graduate from the minor leagues or from this draft to join the, the team. He's starting in the rotation, but I get the sense he's going to move to the bullpen once... Uh, Once Yudai Ono's back, at which point we probably send down one of Issei or Izumi or Tanaka. The lineup, you've got Okuma, Sato as your big on-base guys. Contact aplenty there. Then you got the beef, Yoshida, Seiya, Ota, Yamamoto ready to be a DH. Our new first baseman, Hisanoda Yasuda, who my scout already starts to not like, but I bet you at age 26 he hasn't forgotten how to play. Ali Sanchez behind the dish, Manny Guzman manning the hot corner. And we've got, oh right, I forgot Eiju Nakamura also making the 40 man. So our fifth round pick had a great put, uh, spring training, so he's going to stick. Bench options, Daichi Suzuki, our cap, one of our captains, Kotaru Kurebayashi, backup first baseman, Kashi Wabata, always handy behind shortstop, and starting to compare kind of favorably to Guzman, actually. Guzman's got the better avoid Ks and has more of a gap bat. Also better defensively, but having both these guys is a nice, very nice thing to have. Yoshida will retake the field since we don't have Kepler anymore. Yoshida will be playing for, or left field with Isamu Fukuda available off the bench as a defensive replacement. Akira Yamamoto will DH Yamato Hirano available for corner or center outfielder. So we're carrying a few guys. But if you take a look at how I built this team, it's on contact. I really dislike the fact that my Scout does not like Hisanoda Yasuda. Hopefully I didn't make this trade for no good reason. But he's a better batter than Kurebayashi, from what I can tell. Much better on base. Besides, Kurebayashi is our utility infielder. And he gets his licks in against lefties. This team crushes against lefties. So, maybe I made a mistake in trading for Yasuda. Worst comes to worst, if he flubs it, we decline Arb. And we don't bother bringing him back. Looks like Tongu, Kyoyama, Yoshida, and Takahata all made the club over in Latte. Good for them. I just like the fact that our scout basically said, nope, he's not as good as anymore. Meanwhile, I think I, we sort of fleeced the uh, the Tigers. Taniguchi might still turn into something. Big might. Kendai again? I mean, we know what he is. And Ikeda was valuable for us out of the shoot in the postseason drive. So, 
that should about do it for now. Just scooping out, we're going to be facing the Bears at their place. Yamamoto, Gomez, Sakaki Bada against them. And then at home, it will be Matsuda getting the opening day start. Akira Ishikawa, or hopefully Yudai Ono, will be getting day two. Thad Ward, day three. And Thad is now on the bump for getting dropped because we got Duncan Davitt, who can at least go longer than five innings, perched and waiting in the minors. So that'll about do it for this edition. Like I said, next Wednesday will not be streaming. I will be hopefully at a real baseball game, but you'll catch us again on Sunday or on Saturday next week. Until then, folks, Fire Age. Take us out.